today i will introduce few topics in the sense very brief description of the problems which one has to tackle okay if you are doing a actual helicopter because till now we studied only blade blade power condition forward flight taking only the flap motion then we did the blade dynamics highly approximate model flap motion lag motion torsion motion independently then i introduced the coupled flap lag torsion problem but that is a complex we will keep it one side but uh, helicopter is not just the blade because you have a rotor attached to a fuselage and that is to fly so the problem which come in coupling a rotor system to a fuselage so this is the complete helicopter system so we have the rotor and of course the fuselage initially you can again make up because it is also a long big structure okay it will have its own dynamic characteristic aerodynamic whatever drag or etc so this is like and this itself can also have its own motion now when you want to analyze the rotor blade along with fuselage then what happens is your blade will get affected blade motion is affected because of fuselage motion because in all our earlier formulation we said the hub fixed hub doesn't move there is no except forward flight it moves steadily that is all there is no perturbational motion of the hub now you have a hub motion also is going to contribute to the dynamics of the blade so what was done is they try to classify the coupled rotor fuselage dynamics because this is so this is the most complex problem and you should have several sequence of coordinates transformation between one coordinate system to the another to blade rotating non rotating deformed undeformed because that kind of a sequential transformation one has to have that is why it cannot be taught in a class only thing is we will give a glimpse of the complexities and how these problems are tackled so you have under this heading we try to split the problem into some three major categories see one is vehicle dynamics vehicle dynamics means it is like a pilot is sitting he is taking the helicopter for some task or mission for him he doesn't bother about how the rotor behaves only thing is he will see that how the vehicle is behaving so that is related to totally the handling quality of the vehicle he will say from starting i have to hover from this point i have to go to somewhere else do a task come back and during that he should be able to ride the vehicle in a comfortable manner in terms of handling quality then there are certain uh, aero mechanical because this is a word that is used instability problem they are part of it only thing is you have to make sure that you don't get into those problems and that is why i put air slash ground resonance these are two types of resonance problems ground resonance is more catastrophic compared to air resonance 
here also it is a coupled between rotor and fuselage motion. Now, what type of problem is this? That is why you have to see in each case how the dynamics itself is changed and of course, the last problem is vibration, vibration in the helicopter not the steady load please understand. Now, this is a vibrating, vibrating machine helicopter is a vibrating machine only if you sit inside you will know, but if they fly at low speed it is all fine, but when they start flying at high speed then you have to be there physically because you know, I was uh, okay, fortunate to fly in the ALH in the initial production when they were starting when they flew you will be surprised I was sitting at the back. the window or the door pan that was vibrating in this much. You feel that the whole thing will shatter off which is really scary okay, because they deliberately did that kind of a loading condition. So, you have to minimize, but vibration problems always exist in helicopters ever since the first helicopter was built and even today it is a problem, but this is being studied for a long time industry they follow certain procedures to reduce the vibration after the helicopter is built. Because of the simple fact if you want to know the vibratory load how much is the load that is coming the estimation of the load from a theoretical formulation to actual reality there is a big gap because still we do not know many things we make approximation in blade modeling we make approximation in uh, aerodynamic modeling and there are lot of rotating components in the helicopter everything contributes to the vibration and the fuselage is a flexible structure now it is a vibrating structure. Now, you see in each problem the approximation that is made in modeling and to understand what really happens in the helicopter okay, differ from which problem you are addressing. Suppose if you take I want to study vehicle dynamics that means, how the vehicle should move when I give a control input how it turns because pilot has to fly like you have a motorcycle you say you want to go at speed you say increase the throttle, but when you increase the throttle it takes it accelerates. Similarly, this also but if it accelerates very fast very slow that is how the quality, but that is purely a qualitative statement the pilot how he feels comfortable. So, I will come to the point later, but this has to be quantified because one is qualitative yeah it is good, but it is good means what? It may be good for somebody, it may not be good for somebody else. So, they try to categorize and then put some kind of a band saying that if it is within this zone the numbers in general pilot will say it is fine, but in the modeling handling quality is essentially due to if pilot gives a control input how the vehicle responds. Okay. If it is very sluggish then it is a sluggish, but if you give a little input it suddenly turns then it will be very sensitive. So, these are the two extremes, so you have to make it and in the process it should not be unstable that is the most important thing. Okay. The vehicle stability comes into picture, but in solving this problem the fuselage is treated as a rigid body because that is easy simple. So, treat the fuselage as a rigid body with its own inertia properties mass and all the inertia tensor, but we have to consider the rotor blade in modeling the rotor blade usually I am telling you, but it is not mandatory 
to get a good understanding the blade is modeled only for flap okay only flap motion of the blade is included just to get initially today of course with the computing power and modeling you know you can have flap lag torsion but if you have too many things finally you will not know what is happening why certain things are happening so to have an understanding they said okay we will take first flap motion but flap dynamics whether they consider the full flap dynamics are they do some approximation okay now this is again purely based on the dynamics of flap because we learned when we did the flap motion the flap responds very quickly to control input the time lag is very less because even one quarter of a revolution you give an input it takes the time constant we did since it is very fast so they say any input the pilot gives the rotor immediately tilts there is the time delay is less so you can assume it as though it is a quasi static approximation this is a word uh, right now you take it as a word because quasi static even though the blade dynamics is it has all the motion but you neglect all of them you say input output steady value okay if i go this much theta not what will be my r theta not theta 1 c theta 1 s anything what will be my tilt of the rotor disc like what you solved in the trim problem which we quite a few tried and gave up but uh, two solved okay two students now this is the approximation you make and then solve like your aircraft stability problem you have the helicopter stability problem but only thing is here the pitch and roll are coupled so even though in the aircraft terminology you longitudinal stability you do separately and then lateral separately you do here you can do but then you know that this coupling is quite strong you cannot avoid the coupling okay so you have to take the coupling and this is used for all control stability characteristics of the vehicle okay now this equation i'll just write the equation i will not write anything beyond you can put it like this is the standard you all may know okay x dot ax plus bu u is the control input x are the states which you may say states are your u v w three velocities three angular motions but who will give me the matrix a and the matrix b okay now this is where the field start one is you theoretically you can estimate what is like approximation only you can do you take the rotor loads transfer the rotor loads to the fuselage and then check for a small change what is the change in the moment and force etc these are the system dynamics system dynamics which includes flap motion is here but if you want to treat flap separately then you have to add those equations okay that is why you use quasi static flap and link how flap is affected because of fuselage motion and aerodynamics it's a loop and then you get and this this is the control derivatives these are you may call it stability derivatives or system matrix i will call it okay you formulate this and they will vary from every flight every flight means every speed this matrix is different a and b are different if you hover it has one value if you go to a little forward speed it will have one value if you go to another speed it will have another value so this entire formulation is actually called 
linearized stability analysis. That means, if you are flying at that speed, if there is a disturbance, what happens? That is all you can study. But it still does not tell you, if I want to go from hover to some speed, what should I do? That pilot will still give the input, he will go, okay, keep on going and then he will stop. That transient part, you cannot capture, because once you are hovering, you have a matrix A, you give an input, around that point vehicle will start moving. The moment vehicle starts, whether the A is still valid or not, this matrix. Suppose if it goes to 5 meter per second speed, 10 meter per second speed, 30, 40 meter per second, that means every speed the value matrix A is different. So, this is a transient part, that is a very tricky problem to solve. Okay. So, this is the type of equations with flap alone, you use it and then try to estimate the vehicle, estimate the vehicle handling quality and then they say theoretically, okay, this is the range, after that flight test, because you are the matrix A and B are also theoretically estimated, but how good they are? Do you know the inertia of the vehicle properly? Mass, okay inertia i x x, i y y, i x y, i x z that have to be estimated. If you make an error there, it will have different characteristic and if you make a aerodynamics approximation, it will give you something else. Final proof is when you fly. So, what they do is they do flight test, ask the opinion, but the flight test they will put sensor, pilot will give an input, they will see what is happening. Then based on that, this is another field, I do not work in this field, you estimate again, that is the parameter estimation. You try to do parameter estimation of these from flight test data and then you again adjust, okay, which is a separate study, I will not get into that, okay. But here you study stability control, that is all, is the vehicle stable? because this equation you all must have learnt in your some course, without this at least this part, this part where I will come, uh, the maybe next class or I will start something that is the periodic for periodic system. If A of T, A is a constant matrix here, suppose if A is not constant, okay, then what do you do? That we will learn next class, I will teach you a little bit of that. Okay. This is what happens in helicopters, but people do not, of course, research, yes, but uh, if you go into too complicated thing, then you, you will be lost completely. That is why understand simple, based on that you build your insight into how the vehicle behaves. Now, the next problem is the aeromechanical instability, which is again a coupled rotor problem. If you take ground resonance, just for the sake of ground resonance, for simple problem, ground resonance is the helicopter is like this, it is on a ground standing, okay. In this problem, what is more important? Of course, the fuselage can pitch and roll, but what motion couples the fuselage motion is of the blade, what dynamics of the blade which couples is, suppose you say this is the blade, okay. the lead lag motion, okay. maybe lead lag, lead lag dynamics of the blade. This is important if you want to solve ground resonance or air resonance. Uh, okay. So, you see 
the physics is different here you take flap here you take lead lag because with lead lag you can predict this of course if you say if you ask why should I not include flap if you want to include you include but you cannot neglect flap that is what I am telling you you have to have flap dynamics in the problem because without sorry you have to have lag dynamics in the problem if you do not have lag dynamics you may not get that instability but you can have flap lag everything that is for more accurate prediction of the instability, the frequency, the damping etcetera. So, that I will show some result because this is what I did uh, some 20 years ago, 25 years ago because this we correlated with the experimental data and fortunately we got a good correlation. That is how my equations became you know kind of okay you know reasonably right equations you may call it correct equations. Then onwards people started getting that is not a problem okay. Now you see one flap is needed more important there you go lead lag is important. Then you come to vibration problem all are important flap lag torsion everything is important and the fuselage in these two cases can be treated as rigid. But vibration problem fuselage is cannot be treated as a rigid structure it is a vibrating structure. So, now you see that problem is the most complex problem because you have to take flap lag torsion dynamics okay. Now in the range of frequency also there is a difference between this problem this problem and this problem what frequency range these dynamics happen okay. If you take uh, vehicle dynamics this I put approximately less than 1 hertz okay it is a low frequency because usually a human being cannot give input suppose you say you want to oscillate some what is the maximum frequency you can oscillate. human beings, human beings I am not talking about a machine, human beings what frequency you can shake some input suppose you say you want to have a collective input you want to keep moving what frequency you can do maximum, no 5 10 is very high it is about 2 to 2, 2 to less than 3 hertz around 2 to 3 hertz is the maximum you can do okay and also vehicle dynamics sometimes you may have a slightly higher frequency do not bother about that but in general it is a low frequency phenomena okay vehicle dynamics low frequency of course this I mentioned quasi steady flap quasi steady quasi static you can take and rigid body modes of fuselage point. Aeromechanical instability frequency is in the range 2 to 5 hertz because that is related to what is the lead lag frequency okay. And usually the lead lag frequency falls somewhere there then there is a transformation please understand. And this range is slightly different from this of course you may find something in that range also one or two modes may be sitting there in this range of frequency but mainly the numbers are low you never have this some 0.2 hertz whether you will have a instability of lead lag uh, sorry a ground is no not that low frequency you will not have. But you may have a vehicle dynamic mode 0.2 hertz 0.3 hertz something like that. Then when you go to vibration problem it is greater than 5 that means usually it is, two. It is a lot of frequencies will be there. but they will say 20 hertz, 40 hertz, 80 hertz like that it is a anything more all here you need to have flap lag torsion of the blade aeroelastic full aeroelastic modeling of the blade fuselage first they take rigid body then you take flexible modes that means fuselage is treated as both it can move like this it can also shake. 
now this is how they you can split but now you may ask why if i develop a completely uh, flap lag torsion fuselage dynamics full equations can i not use it for all this problem yes you can use it okay there is nothing wrong but then for ease of understanding from design aspect hey, what which mode is critical it is easy to isolate that part then understand that part otherwise you say i will take everything and then give you one total bunch of result nobody will know what to tinker with okay now i'll give you a little bit about something related to because we are talking about rotor fuselage fuselage is non rotating but rotor is rotating how the dynamics is coupled okay because for a person sitting outside the rotor is like a disk now you say it is like a disk how the disk is moving not how individual blades are moving the motion of the disk to motion of the blade yes there is a relation but as a disk from a non rotating frame i don't bother which blade is rotating so long as the rotor disk if it moves i know that is going to churn my helicopter so there is something called uh, i'll tell you the modes how they split just for ease of understanding this is called when all this is a flap this is lag okay i have taken a four bladed system if all the blades go up by the same flap then it is called collective then you know that all the blades are going to go like this see it's not that they are going to be steady please understand what we solved in the earlier problem is steady flap now this flap itself is going to do like this okay and uh, this longitudinal this will oscillate and lateral it will do this is the dynamics of the rotor system now there is a all of them move simultaneously by the same amount that is called collective flap similarly here i put collective lead lag you can have same but the terminology is collective torsion also you can have but geometrically representing is a bit difficult that's why i put lead lag flap then when you go to cyclic you say these you start from one blade one blade has gone up then number 2 blade does not move number 3 goes down and number 4 does not move same thing is shown here number 1 has gone back because this is the direction of rotation gone back number 2 not moved number 3 has gone forward and number 4 this is one way another way is just a tilt by 90 degree so this is 1c this is 1s but you can't split these two they will always be coupled even though for diagram explanation this is how it is given but you cannot couple these two modes they are, sorry decouple they are always coupled and then the last one if if you have four blades now this is a very tricky thing you said dal you are putting four blades suppose if i have only two blades what will i have okay there is another situation from my, when i look at it from outside if there are only two blades in the rotor system what do i call collective you can understand both the blades go up another one is one blade going up another blade going down okay and that is this 
one blade is up, the next blade is down and the next one is up and then this is down. So, it is like in a flap two blades are down, two blades are up. Okay. Similarly, here if you see lead lag, this is back, this is forward, this is back, this is forward. This is called alternating mode or differential mode, differential or alternating. Okay, now, for a four bladed rotor, I have represented four types of blade motion and each one looks a particular rotor mode, rotor mode, collective rotor mode, cyclic rotor modes, alternating rotor modes. You got it? Now, if I have more blades, if I have three, then you can have only collective this cyclic and this cyclic, which means longitudinal lateral, two cyclics only you can have, because this cannot be there. This will be existing only when you have even number of blades, because otherwise that mode cannot be there. Now, if you have eight blades, because there are, or you have five blades, then five blades what will you have? Then you say this one you will have two cyclic modes. Okay. Then you can go to eight blades like that this is a, now you see this is some kind of a transformation please understand transformation between individual blade to rotor modes. So, blade mode rotor mode. This is a mathematical transformation, because each blade will have one flap motion. If you have four blades, four will be flapping. That means, if four blades have four flap motion means, in the fixed frame I must have equal number of degree of freedom. So, it is like if I have three, here also three because it is a 1 is to 1, it is a mapping kind of a thing, because here this dynamics is 4 flap modes, independent blade, I will have 4 here, those 4 are shown here for a 4 bladed system. Now, this transformation, I think I have, yeah, I will just show you the transformation okay. and why it is done, what is the role, this is called multi blade coordinate transformation. Okay, this is one of the names, this is also called Fourier, but not Fourier transformation, it is a Fourier coordinate transformation. Okay, this is not normally used in uh, everywhere, only some the motor people know, electrical some group they will know what this transformation is and usually this is very peculiar only to rotors, other people will not know this, but this is called some places Fourier coordinate transformation, not Fourier transformation please understand. That is why I do not want to confuse it, I put the word multi blade coordinate transformation. Here the general alpha, alpha is a general uh, flap or lag or torsion any mode that is the degree of freedom of a blade. So, alpha sub k is first blade flap, second blade flap, k can vary from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as many number of blade that is why I have given here. k represents how many indexing 1, 2, 3, n is the number of blades. Okay. Now, you see when I add all the motion of the blade that is beta 1 plus beta 2 plus beta 3 plus beta 4 divided by 4, it is like a mean value of the flap motion that is the collective. Here I do 
minus 1 to the power k. Okay. So, first blade will have negative, second blade will have positive, third blade will have negative. Then this is called the alternating mode. I wrote only for even n only, even number of blades that transformation will come. Then when you go to here alpha n c n s I have given. This particular thing we will come back. Cosine n psi k alpha k sin n psi k alpha k this is 2 over n 2 over n here this n is defined by this particular l n can take this n lower case n can take the value 1 to capital l where l is in terms of the number of blades L equals n minus 1 over 2 for odd n. That means, if you have 3 blades, 3 minus 1, 2, 2 by 2, so n can be only 1. But if you have 4 blades, again you go for e 1 blade is the n minus 2 by 2, so this is again 1. Okay. But if you have 5 blades, 5 minus 1 by 2, that is 4 by 2, 2. So, you will have alpha 1 c, alpha 1 s, alpha 2 c, alpha 2 s and that n also will come here. Okay, that is the second cyclic modes. This is the transformation, but please understand in this alpha k is the individual blade degree of freedom and this is the rotor degree of freedom. You may say what is this, this looks because why you know, there is a very subtle thing. I am actually doing in all these things a summation over all the blades, right. Why do you have to sum it up over all the blades? Because you know that at the hub it is not one blade effect, it is the effect of all the blades. So, I have to add all of them and that is the one which goes to the fuselage. Okay. And when you derive your fuselage equations, you will find that that summation is always there because all blades you have to sum up at every instant what is the load. Okay. Then that summation you can use to transform from individual blade to rotor degree of freedom. This transformation will come out nicely. Of course, this also has another, another advantage, but you may say should I have to do this replace it. If you want you can do, but this gives a good insight into the problem. Now, if you know these rotor modes, please under if I know the rotor mode, can I get the individual blade mode? individual blade motion, yes that is the inverse transformation which is given here. Now, if you look at this, this looks like a Fourier series okay, because any alpha k is some a naught plus summation this, this, this okay, like a Fourier series, but it is not a Fourier series because when you do Fourier series, please understand what is that your a naught a 1 a 2 and then b 1, b 2 all those they are all constants because the periodic signal is written in a sum of harmonic that is orthogonal functions. Okay, that is the Fourier transformation, but the coefficients are constants in the Fourier transformation because Fourier transformation if you say a signal you will write what f of t is some a naught plus summation a cosine n some n omega plus b n sin n omega right and but these are the coefficients corresponding to each frequency 
and omega is the fundamental period of that signal. Okay. Here these are constants and it goes from 1 to infinity and these functions are orthogonal functions. If you integrate over 0 to 2 pi any multiplication they are 0. That is why this expansion this is a very nice representation of a periodic signal. But this is the same representation for a even a non periodic signal also like a random signal. Okay. Random signal you simply say it repeats after infinite time that is all. Now, the summation will become a integral whereas, this looks similar only difference is this alpha m n c alpha m, they are functions of time. Okay. They are functions of time they are not constants because the rotor disc can do like this can do like this can tilt this way. So, it is similar, but not same the, the form looks somewhat and then one last term will be there. This is whenever you have a alternating mode you have to add that term. Okay. Now, this is the transformation. Now, this you can use it to solve all the coupled rotor fuselage every problem and it has I will just briefly tell you suppose I take a perturbation flap equation I put 0 centrally hinge spring restrain plate motion just for the sake of it okay. and the aerodynamics I have added here and rest of the things I am setting it 0 this is a perturbational motion. This is the please note perturbation flap equation. centrally in this is like now if I, I running from 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, I add all of them I get collective collective will look identical to this because beta naught the only thing is i here it is 0 that is one. When you go to 1 cosine and 1 sine they are coupled because this is a part of the because I will not go into the details of this why I bring out this particular aspect is to introduce some concept you will find 1 c equation will have 1 s. Similarly, 1 s equation will have 1 c that means, these two are coupled that cyclic modes of the rotor are coupled collective is independent in this case that is why it is a very simplified case and of course, differential mode or alternating mode that is also independent, but whether this will always be like that no for a simple case of hover it will be like this. these two are always coupled, but when you go to forward flight you will find everything may come coupled all of them will be coupled. Okay. Now, why we look at this particular equation is you can this is a dynamics equation this is a you can write it as m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to 0 and you can solve the Eigen values this is a vibration problem. Okay. When you solve the Eigen values they are nothing but the frequency and damping. Now, what happens to that? So, here the okay, equation in multi coordinates number of blades n that is what I have given here what happens to the frequency this you know this is a m x x double dot you know zeta omega n x dot something 2 zeta and then omega square. So, you immediately say hey this is my frequency in collective mode and this is related to damping whereas, when you go here you cannot immediately say this is my frequency because it is a coupled mode. Okay you can solve for the frequency and damping because you do the matrix equation you can solve it I hope you know it 2 degree of freedom system. Then alternating you know immediately when you look at that this is what is a interesting part I am writing directly the answer if you look at this I will give you here 
rotating system, non rotating system. Okay. That means the frequency of the blade and the damping of the blade in flap mode because this is just an example for flap mode. In the rotating mode all the flap equations are same. So, their frequency is root of omega bar r of square minus gamma by 16 whole square. This is the rotating natural frequency and the damping is gamma by 16 with a minus sign. That is every blade will have the same value. But when you go to the non-rotating, you look at the modes, first say collective mode. Collective mode has the same frequency as this and same damping. Differential also will have the same frequency and same damping, but when you go to cyclic modes, the frequency will be one of them because, because there are two frequencies. You cannot say this is for this, this is for this because this is a coupled mode. You will find one plus this and minus one plus this. Okay. Suppose if you say the rotating flap frequency is 1.09. 1.09 rotating flap frequency that is this number I am taking it as 1.09 when I look at the cyclic mode I will have 1 plus 1.09 and then minus 1 1 will be 0 0.09 ok. Similarly, if you go to the lead lag mode lead lag mode this can be around 0.7 ok. If it is 0.7, you will have 1.7 and 0.3. Ready? That is, these are non-dimensional frequencies. So, you will suddenly find uh, two different frequencies sitting there. In the rotor mode, please understand. This is what causes the ground resonance problems and the coupling, because you suddenly from the fixed frame you see two different frequencies appearing and the frequency this is normally measured they are denoted as I always say high frequency low frequency ok these two collective differential is known, but when you go to cyclic in some places the books will say progressive and regressive when you are first time you go and attend a conference and then listen suddenly people say oh regressive mode, regressive lag mode, what, the, what is the regressive lag mode, what is the progressive lag mode, these are terminologies which imply some meaning attached to that, but that meaning is a little bit more subtle that is why I always say based on high flap frequency low flap frequency ok, but then you may call what is progressive regressive that is due to some phase they will say ok. Now, a progressive mode can become a regressive mode, a regressive mode can become something like that. So, that is why I do not want to use the word progressive and regressive, but in general people normally use regressive mode as the low frequency mode. Okay, but if you go by precise definition of regressive means what sometimes it can also be a progressive mode ok. That is why I do not want to uh, in my all writing of publication everything we always say high frequency low frequency either it is a flap or lag. Now, this frequency will couple with the fuselage motion the fuselage uh, pitch and roll frequency need not be near the flap frequency or the lag sorry lag frequency, but if usually you will find pitch and roll frequency of the helicopter on ground it will be about 2 to 5 hertz somewhere around that. You will find these things can come this particularly the low frequency mode will come close to the fuselage frequency and that causes resonance. 
Now you say oh can I shift that? Okay, you can shift it. If you shift that, then you will have some other loads problem. Okay. That is why tail rotor blades, it is a you remember I told you that is called stiff in plane, soft in plane. Okay. Now, if you take a stiff in plane blade, it will be already 1.7 something like that, 1.7, 1.8. Then when you have that large value, it will become 2.7, 0.7 of that order. Whereas, when you take 0.7, it will be 1.7 and 0.3. Okay. This is how the numbers and this will happen for all whether it is a flap or lag or torsion every mode it happens depending on its own frequency. That is why you find in the, in the fixed frame you will have all sorts of frequencies coming in. Initially you will not know where is it coming from because you know my blade is only having this frequency and here I find some other frequency sitting there. You will in one of the experiments actually that was a very interesting thing there was one frequency which was coming experimental measurement, but you put uh, standard aerodynamic two, two, two cases because this I thought I should share. Experiment was done with two types of blades, one with a matched stiffness. I hope you remember what is matched stiffness means. I mentioned in the class. Okay. Another one non matched. So, if this question is there in the exam, then you will keep turning your notes. No, I am just saying matched and non matched, everything is same, only this difference was there. Experiment was conducted, stability was analyzed, everything. We have our equations, it is matching very good with the experimental data in one case. Only change is the other experiment there was a change in the match stiffness, which you can also incorporate in your mathematical model. We incorporated in the mathematical model, but the results we are not getting it matching with the experiment. So, you say one set of equations representing the dynamics of the coupled rotor fuselage system one particular configuration of the blade, it is exact in the sense very good correlation. Just one change in the parameter, which I can also incorporate in my equations, I do not get the result. Then this is uh, what is going on, because this is something like that is where the lack of understanding of what is the reason for this because then you realize we have our model, see that was an experiment that is not cheating. Model you make approximations, you made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then derived. Then you find that this model is valid for both cases in terms of representing them, but one is giving result another one not. So, it was a big debate. And finally, they said, okay, let us what is the effect? You change the aerodynamic model. Okay, then is the what was introduced is the inflow model. Please understand inflow. A dynamic inflow model was introduced. That means the inflow is also changing when it is shaking. That means you should have a model for that. He said constant inflow, uniform inflow, everything we use. Now you say I want a time varying inflow, please understand how do I get a time varying inflow. Then you say okay, let us it is all again very very if you see the physics is very beautiful, inflow is related to thrust that means if I change my thrust my inflow varies simple. Similarly, my pitching moment I will calculate at the hub pitching moment roll moment. I assume a like a Dries model inflow, but I will say my inflow is time varying. So, I simply relate change in thrust to this, change in dynamics to this and then some mass effect has to come that came from very interesting thing it came from airships, okay. the dynamics of airship that was done long time back 
by Munch, I think 1940s are, these are all very old papers, 40s or 20s, Munch, M-U-N-K, okay. it is a very interesting thing, okay. airship, airship is a ellipsoid, you know what a ellipsoid is, ellipse you rotate about any one of the axis, major axis or minor axis, it is a major axis. Now, if you freeze the major axis to 0, it will be a disk, right, a circular disk. He developed an equation if an airship moves, what is the difference between airship motion in air and then uh, aircraft motion in an air? Because when you have airship, it displaces large volume, when it moves, it also takes the surrounding air with it. Suppose you take a balloon, you see you hit, it just, see it does not go very nicely, it just gives a jerky. Actually the inertia of the balloon when you tap it is not the balloon inertia, balloon plus the surrounding air inertia you have to add, okay. that is what the apparent inertia effect. Now, he developed one for upper, that means air mass is added into the your physics. Okay. So, that was he developed, if you squeeze everything, it will give you some approximate number. And you just take that number, put it in this model, you run it and it worked. Then you were able to capture those frequencies, that is what I am telling you, see. Then they say, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Aerodynamics of something else affecting my frequency in getting in the coupled rotor fuselage dynamics and you are able to get that. But it is a relation of so many hanging things brought together to solve. But you may say, oh, these are all heuristics, this is what is there is no solid proof, solid theory. Yes, some of the things are not really, if you say, Momentum theory is valid for steady flow, is it valid for unsteady flow, you know, but then you say okay, if there is a perturbation, okay, change in thrust, change in inflow, that is all, you relate it, okay. You do not give a proof, later people started working a little bit more and more and then think, that is why, why I am saying is, sometimes the experiments throw, okay. So, what I have, this is what the root locus plot, which I asked you real part, imaginary part of the roots. So, you put the value, all of them have same frequency and same damping in the collective mode, whereas in the rotating frame, they all are same. When you go to non-rotating frame, they split. You will have a collective differential here, high frequency mode there, low frequency mode here. Of course, this is a mirror image because plus or minus always complex roots. So, you get suddenly more frequencies okay. and these are responsible for certain instability. I will not go into the details of the problem, I simply skip the whole thing. I thought I will show directly to some stability because two important things are there in the helicopter. Helicopter why it is unstable? You will not be answer now. But after I briefly explain that, you will say, oh, okay, maybe this is the reason, that is all, okay. Because helicopter is an unstable vehicle. So, I would like to show some particular, yeah, okay. When you are dealing with the handling quality of the helicopter, okay, I will show the just, uh, I think, uh, very simplistically. This is what I said is the flap in the non rotating frame, how it is affected by various inputs because the dynamics of the problem if you want to know I will show one picture then directly that equation. This is the picture for the dynamics. Okay. The blade is flapping, the fuselage has all these motions. Okay. I have to derive the complete equation, hovering condition, 
and uh, we will not bother about that part because this is itself is a mess. What I want to show here is just the how my rotor cyclic mode 1 c 1 s influenced by theta 1 c I put a bar is basically a pilot input if the variation in that how they will theta 1 c will affect both 1 s again will affect both this is r y dot which is the fuselage longitudinal sorry lateral motion r x longitudinal motion and then theta double dot y in the sense about the y axis which is like uh, pitching acceleration and this is the roll acceleration angular acceleration and then this is the pitch sorry this is the pitch rate this is the roll rate okay now you see all of them will affect my flap now when this is affected hub loads are changed when the hub loads are affected fuselage motion is changed so this particular thing there is one important which they always say coupling parameter that is i give one input if i give longitudinal cycling i find uh, i get a roll also this is related if you see omega r f square minus 1 divided by gamma by 8 now you would have seen this expression in all your beta naught beta 1 c thing okay and that is the coupling parameter now you see if you change your flap frequency higher you increase the coupling tremendously that is the reason why flap has to be at a specific value because it influences everything your flight dynamics is completely influenced by flap but you say lag does not influence well yes but the dominant you look at it the dominance of each mode and then the lock number which is the gamma so you see both of them affect the coupling so actually what happens is as you go at some speed if pilot wants to give a pitch motion actually the helicopter will roll and it is not what you get the unintended motion is much more than what is intended then what do you do because when you give this is suddenly roll then you will start correcting that and it will give then when you correct that this will start doing you will have a tremendous coupling between this motion sometimes you will get the undesirable motion much more than what you intended for the bit. So, these couplings one has to be you should pilot should get used to that number one in the design you try to minimize that is all you cannot eliminate. Suppose if you say centrally hinged blade omega r f is 0 good, but then centrally hinged blade will not have a good control characteristic because you cannot get a control movement because your c m y c m x you got that is related to same omega r f square minus 1. So, this is how on one hand if you say I do not want coupling then you lose something else control. So, this has to be adjusted ok. Now, I thought I will show you some important stability characteristic which is like suppose you say the helicopter is hovering ok take it and suddenly the helicopter moves just slight motion or there is a wind anything you can take it. If it moves like this just this called speed stability ok. If you are suddenly if you go what happens one side I will say this is a very interesting thing there are two aspects which are speed stability angle of attack stability and something like that ok. Speed stability you are your helicopter is ok 
you are hovering and you find there is a small disturbance, disturbance can come even if you do not move air can come. Assume that air is coming, then what will happen if this is the rotor disc and this is your forward direction, this half of the blade Okay. What will it, it will experience a increased velocity, right? This will experience decreased velocity. Pilot is not changing any control, please understand. He is hovering with a fixed angle, collective, everything is fixed. Disturbance, one side lift increases then what will happen? This will start? No, not roll, that is what the, it is not, it will first flap, because flap dynamics has to happen. Okay. What will happen? This will start flapping up. Flapping up means this blade will go, where it will flap? You know the face, we said the central engine 90 degree or if it is 78, something like that, right? It will go and flap somewhere. When it flaps, what happens? This will come down. That means your rotor tip path plane, what happened? Tip path plane has tilted back. When it tilted back, the thrust vector, what happens? What if the T? T goes. <coughs> when the T goes back, what happens? This will start. No sub, right? And when this starts nosing up, this force now what will happen? It will also give another rearward component. Then what will happen? It will start going back. When it starts going back, what will happen? This will start tilting this way. then it will nose down, then again you go it will do up. So, it will start doing like a pendulum and this is unstable, this motion is an unstable motion. So, what you do is you, but this you cannot take it only pitch motion, please understand. The helicopter will not just pitch about one place, it is like this, it will go like this, like a pendulum it will oscillate about some virtual point, okay. but this is the speed stability, because what you give? You give a forward motion in the sense of disturbance that will actually make the helicopter nose up and the nose up thing plus there is a tail, then it will start going back and it, will, and it can do both pitch and roll, both sides of motion. This is very important stability derivatives, which causes the blade uh, helicopter to be unstable. There is one more term which is called the angle of attack stability. Please understand this is speed stability. Another one is angle of attack stability. Then you may ask what is that is a little different in the sense helicopter is flying forward, steady speed. Okay. When it is flying forward, you find suddenly the helicopter gets a slight disturbance in the vertical direction, vertical that means that is equivalent to variation in inflow, right. The inflow variation here also it will change, here also it will change, but in this side this is a retreating, the forward velocity is less, here the forward velocity is more. Okay. Therefore, the change in angle of attack on one side to this side is different. 
okay please understand this is angle of attack stability you see it is very it is a subtle thing you are flying forward this side advancing side velocity is more this is retreating velocity is less now you say there is a slight motion of the helicopter or some gust is coming some wind is coming something you because always there is a disturbance and that is in the normal to the board which is like an inflow inflow is same throughout the disc because of this motion of the helicopter but the effect is advancing side because you have a large velocity i may have a same inflow in the other place same inflow the angle of attack change is different okay because of the change in angle of attack difference this will start flapping and that will again do roll motion pitch motion anything so these two are most important stability derivatives but it doesn't mean only these are there are lot of other stability because the entire matrix of a every entry is a stability derivative okay but the critical entries which are which influence the flight dynamics more is this and speed so these are the two. but the physics is it is very quantify you have to get it that means that depends on what speed you are flying how to calculate then it will depend on whether the blade is stalling whether the blade is not stalling all sorts of things okay so this is and it's a very very important thing i'll just show a few because this is for information to most of you there is something called a cooper harper rating i don't know whether it was introduced to you anywhere yes no no okay at least that is good so that you guys can know something this is the handling quality it is a description what is that is qualities of an aircraft it doesn't matter helicopter aircraft any flying vehicle okay that govern the ease and the precision with which a pilot is able to perform the task required in support of an aircraft roll okay that means he is asked to perform a task and how accurately and precisely he can perform see in the world they have competitions also they say go around like this and then various maneuvers see it depends on the pilot skill and it depends on the capability of the vehicle sometimes the vehicle may not have the capability pilot may be good another one is vehicle may have the capability but the pilot cannot do but ultimately you have to get used but the vehicle has certain capability only now how do we improve and at the same time you reduce pilot workload so here they actually give a, with this i stop okay it is a qualitative rating by the pilot please understand sometimes uh, when you start you find it is difficult once you have learned then you say ah it's not it's okay it's easy so the same pilot same person like when you start learning bicycle riding you will say man this is really crazy i how, how everybody is riding i can't ride it but once you have learned uh, oh it's easy so the same person depending on experience you will say oh this task is fine but normally they classify as 1 2 3 4 then 5 6 7 8 9 10 this is basically level 1 level 2 level 3 and then complete intensity you just don't bother about this so any aircraft or vehicle which is built he will evaluate it is this all aircraft characteristics yes it meets okay here you see somewhere here deficiencies but warrant improvement minor to very objectionable here deficiencies require improvement major here improvement mandatory that means it is he just cannot okay so you see they always ask a question 
adequacy for selected task are required, satisfactory without improvement. If he says yes, go up. So, you see it starts with is it controllable first. If he says no, go and change your aircraft, first is controllable. If he says yes, but adequate performance attainable with tolerable pilot workload. If he says no, you go deficiencies require improvement. If he says yes, okay, is it satisfactory without improvement? If he says no, you have to improve means these things warrant improvement minor to sometimes very exceptional. If he says yes, then he say adequacy for selected task are required, then this is the aircraft which is a desired. Then they will say ah, this aircraft is good, but this who decide the test pilot. Okay. That is where the test pilot role, it is all what? If he says no, it is no, because you do not build and then you do not ride it. If you build and ride, then you yourself will feel. You are building something and somebody else to have to ride. Okay? This is a very tough, that is why aircraft after design it goes through. That is why PT1, PT2, you know, technology demonstrator, TD1, TD2, all these you find everything has modification, 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 modification. Finally, you will say, okay, this is it, you cannot do that. Because in some cases, I will tell you, in the helicopter, I have some details. They had to change the rotor shaft itself, height completely because they found that it is uh, vibrating too much and that is a major design change, okay? which means it is like a new project. So, it went through the whole thing. So, there are also questions from HAL side also, I was there in the beginning some, uh, what do you call, you may call it, uh, you give a report, the final decision is they will take, you say what you feel. So, like that there are questions, some questions require are you going to change the entire blade? Entire blade design is that means you are starting from day one, go through. So, if finally it is like pilot has to accept the vehicle, okay.